Hello and welcome to today's event. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laura Dillon from MS Dynamics World and we're here for a session all about improving your accounts payable process with machine learning in D365, FO, and AX. Our presenter is Miko Haitonen, CEO of Duap, and it is truly my pleasure to welcome him here with us today. As we get started, know that we do welcome your questions. Please feel free to enter those questions in at any time during Miko's presentation in the Q&A box on your GoToWebinar dashboard. And I know that Miko and his team will be reviewing those after the session and getting back to you directly. And without any further delay, I'm going to hand things off to Miko to get us started. All right. Thanks, Laura, for, for the introduction. And uh, well, welcome, everybody, to the webinar today. So as, as Laura mentioned, we're going to talk about accounts payable process uh, and what machine learning and AI have to do with that, and, and particularly focusing on D365, FNO, and, uh, and AX. Before going uh, into the topic, maybe just a pr brief introduction uh, of me. So uh, my name is Mikko Haitonen. Uh, I live in Austin, Texas. I get around 20 years uh, experience uh, in, in ERPs, finance and, and business roles. When I got some spare time, I'm, I'm really, really into cooking and uh, Asian fusion cuisine is kind of uh, my specialty. I'm also a sports sports fan and a tech fan and obviously when it comes to AP and AP automation I got do app uh, for that so that's uh, the app to go for for AP. All right uh, moving on to to the agenda so uh, first I'm actually gonna go through a bit of an introduction to to AP automation at a more more generic uh, level and why I'm actually going to do that is, is really that that forms the, the basis uh, for implementing any ML or, or AI in, into your existing uh, processes. And once we've actually got the, the basics covered, uh, then I'm going to explain a bit uh, what are the different terms that we're using. What does uh, RPA mean? What is ML, what is, what is AI, and what are the, the differences uh, between? Then uh, we'll actually uh, move into more, more concrete stuff. Uh, so we're going to look at the opportunities, what uh, these uh, different techniques actually offer for, for finance roles. And this is more at a generic uh, level. So we're not focusing on, on AP automation that much yet, but that's, uh, that's going to be then the next uh, part of my presentation where I'm going to give some examples how ML uh, can be used already today when, when we look at the purchase to, to pay uh, process. And then maybe just a few words uh, on, on the future, how, how we actually see what's, what's going to happen after we implemented all the stuff we can do with RPA, machine learning, and, and AI. So uh, moving on, uh, if we just uh, look a bit what is going on in the markets, uh, and this is probably something that we feel a bit sad about, that if, if we look at uh, already all the products and solutions available on, on the market for AP automation, there are actually plenty, plenty good ones uh, out there. But still, when we look at it, uh, especially for the users of D365 and uh, AX uh, 2012, we've actually seen that 75% uh, of organizations uh, haven't really done anything to, to implement uh, AP automation. And uh, I think in, in our mind, uh, the case for doing that is, is pretty simple and straightforward because you're basically getting the, the benefits from uh, day one. So there shouldn't be anything that's actually stopping you for, for implementing these solutions. And uh, maybe just uh, uh, a bit more background uh, why this makes a lot of sense and I think uh, these are also the core elements when we look at machine learning and AI but even some of the, the R, RPA use cases. Uh, 
So I, I think um, when we look at the Dynamics users' uh, manual data entry and inefficiencies in the processes are something that we probably all all struggle with. And then, then if we go a bit uh, more what happens next, that's obviously the workflows and how things get approved and so forth. So the manual routing of uh, invoices, that's that's another clear pain point when we see when we've actually surveyed uh, the market around these these topics. And also, if you look at the third one there, uh, which the high number of uh, discrepancies and exceptions, uh, that's probably another topic where we can do a lot when we implement uh, some of the automation techniques that I'm going to talk uh, later on. But uh, essentially, if we look at the pain points uh, for Microsoft Dynamics users for processing AP, really the manual data entry and the manual routing of invoices is something that we can actually greatly improve by implementing some of uh, the machine learning and AI techniques. Then uh, maybe just uh, briefly, because um, I think um, what, what we're wondering at times is that uh, why does it uh, take a while for companies to move uh, into AP automation? And I think what we actually hear quite a lot is that uh, there are other priorities. And I think uh, that's going to be the fact always. There are always other priorities. But I, I think uh, how we look at things uh, is really that uh, if you think uh, implementing a pretty standard AP automation, process uh, that's actually quite simple uh, when you rely on on the market standard and you're you're kind of ready to make some changes into your own process to make sure that you're really getting the the best of class solution i wouldn't say it's uh, it's too complicated so there may be other priorities but i would actually encourage everybody to to look into the benefits what you can really achieve when when you would implement ap automation and take uh, take really take really the advantage what the solutions have have to offer and i i think if we look at um, uh, what we hear at times is that uh, implementing ap automation is is complicated not really because uh, in the end uh, ap automation and processing invoices is a pretty structured process so what we would just say is that kind of focus on on the essentials uh, in your your process uh, look a bit around what other people have been doing on on the market and i think uh, the outcome really is that it's not uh, not too complicated and then uh, maybe the third one here uh, what what we uh, here at sometimes is that don't fix something uh, that is not broken. Uh, what we tend to say here is that if you're running a pure manual AP process, uh, it may may work well. But I think when you, when you implement uh, even a bit more level of automation in, into your process, it's actually going to make uh, your and everybody else's life a lot a lot easier who's involved in in the process and. As said, uh, uh, it is broken, but I think uh, we have a lot of uh, solutions uh, currently on the market which you can actually help help you with uh, automating uh, the manual steps that you're currently having in in the process. So uh, moving on. So uh, what is really AP automation, uh, how to get the basics right before you can actually consider robotic process automation, machine learning or artificial intelligence. So there are some uh, basics that you need to look in, into first. And I, I think um, if we look at the overall uh, big picture when it comes to AP automation, um, in, in our mind, uh, it's more a way way of thinking uh, rather than anything else. And uh, I think uh, for whatever pr 
products or, or systems uh, you're using, I think the ease of uh, use must always be in the core because that is, uh, for one thing, driving the adoption for, for the solution. So if things are complicated, it's, it's very unlikely that uh, folks in your organization will get super excited around what, uh, what you're doing. But if you just make sure that the user experience and the ease of use is there from, from the very beginning, it's uh, much more likely that you're, you're gonna run a very, very successful project. In terms of, uh, uh, let's say, some of the areas of uh, automation, what we see, I think uh, there are two different types. Uh, first of all, there's kind of the, the pure transaction handling automation, but secondly, there's uh, the process automation. And maybe just to explain a bit the differences around these two, two areas. So I think for the process automation, uh, when we have uh, all the data available in, in our systems, we know what to do. We have uh, the approval workflows there. There's no point of having uh, extra clicks for, for anybody in the system. And that is really what we mean by process automation. So everything that can be kind of in terms of the steps within the process automated, you, you should. Of course, uh, at the same time, uh, you need to have the relevant control points, uh, follow your delegation of authority and so forth. But basically, the ones where you're just clicking the button, it makes a lot sense to, to automate those. And when it actually comes to, to the other part, which is the transaction handling automation, so uh, we know especially when, when we look at uh, purchase invoices and invoices we receive that uh, there are actually quite a lot of repeating patterns. Uh, you get the same uh, invoices uh, from the same vendors pretty much every every month and it, even at times the amounts are the same so there's no reason why you couldn't uh, automate your invoice coding and, and so forth. And I, I think this is also where the machine learning really, really comes in, into play because uh, when there's a pattern, that is something that you can easily utilize to, to automate the things uh, that you're doing or are being done in, in the systems. And I, I think uh, one, one important thing what uh, we're really looking into in, in terms of uh, machine learning and partially AI as well is that uh, what are kind of the behavior patterns of, of the different users. And what I actually mean by this is, is that, uh, uh, let's say if you're an approver user, you don't actually need to see a lot of the data that is uh, normally available in the system. You can actually just focus on, on the areas which are really relevant for you approving the invoice. And really the system should uh, automatically highlight those areas when, when you log in, for example, to your mobile app to approve your invoice. You should only see the relevant data there based on your, your past behavior. So this is really what it means when we're trying to learn from what, what the users are doing in, in the system. And then maybe just to, to focus uh, on the first step uh, when, when you're automating your accounts payable process, uh, uh, really we need to get rid of the paper because I, I think uh, uh, getting something automated, applying some of the machine learning, AI techniques, it really means that we have access uh, mostly to structured data, but at some, sometimes also on unstructured data. And uh, really automating paper is complicated, but when we actually have all the data on our invoice in electronic format, uh, we have all the metadata correct that we need for processing the invoice, then we're, we're basically good to go and also take, uh, take the next steps in automation. So mainly, relating to the more advanced techniques of machine learning and uh, AI. This is something that I, I mentioned already 
earlier, I, I think that uh, we see quite a lot that uh, uh, our clients uh, on the market want to customize the AP process quite a bit. Uh, we we tend to say say to our clients and prospects that actually, if you just think about uh, the whole AP process uh, from a very simplistic approach, it's it's quite simple. And I, I think uh, also uh, the process uh, as such should be quite simple. So when we just look at uh, some of the core areas within the process and receiving invoices, uh, you receive, you process and approve, and then it goes all the way to payment. So if we kind of uh, really simplify the thinking, the process uh, should be simple and straightforward. Of course, we know that there are quite uh, complex things around uh, different types of uh, purchases and purchase orders and so forth. But I think uh, really we should be focusing what are the similarities and how, how to improve the process because that is really when, when you're getting all, all the benefits from the automation as well. And going to the benefits, uh, I think uh, automation, obviously, that will save you quite a bit of money. Uh, it will save you a lot of time. And I, I think one of the key areas, uh, what could even be the most important thing, is that you actually gain visibility and control to your AP process. You really know what is going on. You you know where your invoices are at. If if there's a manual approval, someone needs to go through. You can really figure out uh, where's the invoice stuck and take the, the necessary action. Although in in our mind, uh, many of the actions that are currently manual will be automated going going forward. But uh, I'll I'll dive into that a bit later in in this presentation. Then maybe just briefly to explain uh, our way of looking at things, uh, how, how we see AP automation. And I think this is pretty much similar for all, all the other players on, on the market. So as mentioned earlier, the first thing is, uh, is to get rid of uh, the paper. And if it's an email invoice, similarly, we need to capture the relevant uh, data. So that is why we have the scan capture and validation service, which is, which is basically the first step in, in terms of uh, getting the, the data in, in a digital format. Then obviously, um, when you've captured all the relevant data, then you have the approval workflows. Uh, uh, if it's a non-PO invoice, uh, there's the non-PO coding. And obviously, for the PO-based invoices, will automatically match against uh, the POs that have been issued in, in, issued in your D365 or AX2012. Uh, and why I've actually highlighted uh, these parts in, in the process uh, is really that I think uh, these are the areas where we can get most of the benefits from, from the automation. And uh, I'll go uh, back to the user cases, use cases uh, a bit later in, in the presentation, but this is kind of a preamble for, for that. So uh, there are a lot of uh, areas which we can automate and uh, I'll, I'll let you know the concrete steps a bit later. Obviously, when looking at, at a solution, there are a lot of different areas there like reporting, archiving, obviously you need to capture the, the audit trail, all the other compliance uh, requirements. And in the end, when, when you're done with the AP part, obviously, then the invoices uh, get transferred to AX2012 and the D365. So uh, let's move on uh, uh, to the RPA, machine learning and AI part. And uh, I'm not going too technical in this presentation. Uh, this is uh, this is more more of a view how how you should uh, look at things from from a very concrete approach towards uh, the the AP automation. And uh, this may be something that uh, you've already heard and are are familiar with. Uh, 
but anyway, I'll, I'll open up our thinking a bit here. And I, I think uh, this is along the lines that the market in, in general is thinking, but maybe, maybe just to give you a bit of an overview. So if we look at the, the RPA, the robotic process automation, which is typically something uh, where you would uh, get started, and this is not uh, typically directly related to AP automation either, because you can actually automate a lot of different areas in, in your processes. But uh, as, uh, as the kind of term goes, it's really around process automation. And uh, you could actually think uh, that the robot, which you're having clicking things in your user interface is more of a virtual employee. So based on uh, rules that you've actually set, uh, and it doesn't need to be in the same system, it can be between multiple systems as, as well, you kind of have a virtual employee which will uh, click through through the different uh, screens and so forth in your systems to make sure that your process is automated and moves on as, as planned. I think uh, with RPA, it's pretty easy to implement. Uh, if you take uh, one of the solutions uh, that are available there on, on the market, uh, go live can, can really be, be in days. So uh, when, when you just know what are the areas you want to automate in your process, uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward to, to get going. And uh, obviously, uh, for this part, you typically use your existing applications and processes, so you're you're automating the different steps that you're having in in your process. And of course, uh, this is very rule based, uh, so you define the rules, and based on those rules, you will actually start to automate your your process. I think when we go then uh, to to the next step, uh, the machine learning. So uh, I'd say that's really uh, learning from the data that you have available from from the history. It's also uh, identifying the repeating patterns uh, that you would have in your system based on on that that data. So I think uh, these are kind of uh, the key things what you need to think for machine learning. So you have the data and you identify the repeating patterns. And based on that, uh, you would then be building your application. Of course, it's, uh, it's a bit of an iteration. So you always have a feedback loop there. So you go back and see that, okay, this is what the machine thought that should happen and was it actually in line what uh, what the real life is and what we've actually seen seen in in the past and of course as as uh, with many data driven application quality data is is really the key because if you don't have quality data you won't get the quality results uh, either so i think um, this is an area where you need to pay constant attention because you just want to make sure that the data in, in your systems is, is high quality because then you will also get high quality results. There are quite a quite a lot of out-of-the-box solutions available on, on the market already for, for this, but um, of course uh, how it normally goes is that if you want to go very, very advanced with, with your learning algorithms and so forth, then it will for sure require some uh, custom development. And uh, as with uh, many of the modern solutions, it's really about trial and error and continuous improvement. When you got the, the first uh, steps uh, covered, then, then obviously you will uh, move into more advanced used cases and also better better results uh, as, as a result of, of the learning learning process. I think the artificial intelligence is then then the third level where you really uh, try to simulate uh, what a human being uh, would do there and that obviously that would then include all, all the behavioral patterns not just the data and obviously pretty much all all you have available to try to try to predict uh, the behavior. And that is um, kind of where the algorithms tend to get uh, get really, 
really complex and I think uh, even as the term says artificial intelligence I'd, I'd really kind of uh, emphasize the intelligence so uh, when we're at this level also uh, the machine should be able to interpret its own own actions and and learn learn from that not just uh, the data and I, I think uh, when we look at these solutions uh, there are some available on, on the market, but this is typically where you really, really go deep into the algorithms and technology and really see how that would uh, best uh, support your, your business. And obviously in, in the end, uh, the target is get to close uh, 100% level of uh, autonomy. And when we're talking about um, these things, and um, I'd say specifically the, the AP automation in D365 and uh, AX, uh, uh, really the machine learning and AI, they are already there. So uh, many, many of uh, the products uh, that are linked to the AP automation of uh, the Microsoft ERPs are already using a lot of these techniques obviously including our our own solution and I think the RPA part that is something that you can use more uh, more generally in your process automation so it doesn't need to relate just uh, let's say to AP automation but it can actually relate to to the li links between the different uh, systems. And maybe just uh, briefly how uh, we see the AP automation uh, evolution. I, I think uh, when when we got started, it was uh, kind of uh, in a way pretty simple, making sure that we have the right workflow to get uh, the purchase invoice uh, approved, and maybe based uh, based on a certain vendor, the approval routing. Uh, would uh, follow a certain pattern and so forth. So uh, kind of uh, then the next step would be the, the rule-based uh, automation. So essentially uh, one good example of, of that is that if you receive uh, an invoice from a certain vendor, the coding of that invoice uh, would uh, always follow a certain pattern. Or if it's a certain vendor, there would be always a certain approval workflow which would uh, which would uh, result so very very much uh, based on on the rules available and i think the rpa as as mentioned uh, earlier on that is something uh, where you can then take more more complex uh, use cases and also also automate between different uh, systems but then when we go uh, further in terms of the level of uh, automation, really the machine learning and AI are, are the ones that are getting you closer to the 80% or 100% mark when, uh, when you're automating your accounts payable process. So uh, this would uh, then be not, uh, not just uh, rule-based because uh, you can get to a certain level with the rule-based rule applications, but really uh, you always have the human interaction, you have uh, the exceptions in, in the system and this is something that needs to be taken in, into account and this is uh, where machine learning and AI are, are helping big time. Uh, then maybe uh, some of uh, the use cases uh, for, for machine learning and, and AI, so what, what can you actually do with these, uh, with these two? And I'm uh, starting with a bit uh, wider context in terms of uh, the finance organizations and, and then, uh, then moving on more to the AP specific use cases. I think this is kind of uh, the classic, uh, the forecasting. So when you actually have uh, a lot of data from, from the past, uh, including the behavior of, uh, of your customers, uh, you can combine that to external data sources like uh, weather data, uh, demand and so forth. That is where I'd say and what I like to call the classic use case and that's uh, that's the forecasting. 
So uh, basically, when you know what happened in the history, you can pretty easily uh, get a prediction towards uh, the future. And I, I think, um, unfortunately, even though this use case uh, has been pretty much around, I think I would even say forever, still, still we see quite a little application in, into this use case. Uh, of course, if you look at companies, there are companies at different levels in terms of applying this, but uh, we really see that there are actually a lot of, uh, let's say, manual phases currently where you could take the advantage uh, of the forecasting use cases just to make your, your everyday life easier when you're putting for example, your your financial forecast or your demand forecast to, together. Uh, I think uh, another thing uh, what happens always uh, in a finance organization is analyzing the data. And nowadays, um, the machines can actually do that very well. Of course, uh, when the use cases uh, get very complicated, uh, the algorithms get complicated as well. But let's say if you want to analyze uh, standard deviations, what you're having, let's say, in your in your revenue line or your expenditure, uh, there are a lot of solutions available already who can actually uh, do, do that for you. And of course, uh, when you have the basic analysis uh, conducted by a solution applying some of the machine learning or AI techniques, then you can really focus uh, on the deltas and exceptions, uh, which are maybe something that the machine cannot uh, yet figure figure out. And uh, I, I think um, also if we look at just the quantity of transactions that typically go through in, in a finance organization, there are a lot of uh, items uh, which can be automated. And uh, I think uh, one of the benefits is really that then when you automate the basic stuff, uh, you can really focus uh, on managing the exceptions because as we all know, uh, there are always uh, those. Uh, there are things that we couldn't predict. There are exceptions. Uh, that we didn't have visibility to. So basically what uh, what we're saying here is that you want to automate the basics uh, as, as much as you can because then you can really, really focus uh, on the exceptions because what tends to happen is that you're putting a lot of your time and effort in, into the basic stuff, uh, meaning that you don't have the necessary time that you would actually need to spend on looking at, at some of uh, the exceptions. I think then one, one area, uh, if you look at uh, modern systems, uh, many of them, unfortunately not all, they have pretty good uh, APIs and integration layers. So uh, if you look at, and I'd say this is probably mostly the RPA techniques, uh, you can actually easily automate also between different um, systems. So uh, if you just have access to the interface, uh, you know what's the next thing to happen in, in the process, uh, the robot can actually do it, do it for you. And I think there are a lot of uh, use cases going even, even beyond the finance organizations where you can really, really get benefit just just by putting the necessary rules in into place so that you can take the first uh, first steps in terms of automating your your processes and then i think uh, uh, the fraud detection uh, is something that uh, we see nowadays quite a lot and uh, i think uh, we've all heard uh, heard the stories when there has been a fraudulent invoice or a payment request or something like that. And uh, unfortunately, these are something that go through our systems and checks and controls at a time. But I think when we have access to all the data, we have the necessary tools that we can use. Uh, we can easily identify the, the patterns and actually 
tackle the fraud before it can even even happen because I think uh, fraud as such is all, always a result of certain anomaly which you haven't uh, seen in your process earlier. I'll go a bit deeper in, into this when we talk about the fraud detection when it comes to, to AP automation. And then maybe something that uh, we probably uh, haven't uh, paid that much attention to if we look at finance organizations. Uh, obviously, if uh, if you go into any any website nowadays, uh, there's the, the chatbot which which you may or may not like, and it may or may not give the answers you're you're after. But I, I think also uh, for finance organizations, uh, both uh, for the internal internal folks, but also for the outside companies that have questions, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to implement a chatbot to actually address some of those uh, questions, because then again, it will save uh, a lot time from the organization to, to focus on different things, when you can at least, uh, let's say, the more more simple questions or the simpler questions you can actually address by by a chatbot which then again is is using some of uh, the data the machine learning and ai capabilities that can be easily embedded in into your systems and and solutions then if if we go uh, a bit uh, more into the um, ap automation or, or the purchase to, to pay uh, process. Uh, I think uh, some of uh, the most simplest use cases obviously matching your invoice against the PO automatically. And I, I think this is something that, it, that is very, very standard in, in the AP automation solutions. But obviously, uh, as I said earlier, for you to be able to match the invoice against the PO, it means that uh, you need to have the invoice data in electronic format, because then when you have access to the data on the invoice, you can easily match it uh, against uh, the, the PO. And uh, obviously, if there's a purchase receipt or sorts that can be matched in, in a similar manner, or you actually get, get the data from, uh, from different uh, sources. And of course, uh, I think uh, if there's a match against the PO, uh, that is probably something that we always uh, wish for to make our process automated. But uh, I think uh, with the ML and AI techniques, even though there isn't a total match, uh, we can actually apply those in, in the systems to automate it, even though there isn't, uh, isn't a perfect match. I think a good uh, example is uh, freight charges and so forth, some miscellaneous charges which you would have on an invoice and the ML and AI in the system can easily identify that, hey, actually this was a similar charge that I had in the previous invoice, so it probably makes uh, sense to auto-approve this. And obviously, you can then set certain thresholds. Uh, let's say if uh, if you have an invoice of uh, ten thousand dollars and you have a miscellaneous charge of fifty fifty dollars, that's probably okay to go go through an automated workflow. But uh, let's say if the miscellaneous uh, charges are, are like twenty percent of your invoice value, then you probably want to have have a manual step there and I think these are all where the ML and AI capabilities in in the system can can help. Uh, of course uh, the non-PO invoice coding uh, based uh, based on on rules or machine learning from the ex existing data you can easily make this uh, more automated so uh, basically if it, ha if it has happened in the past, in a certain way, it's, it's very likely that this particular invoice from the same vendor, pretty much with the same amount, would be something that uh, would be coded according, according uh, to what you've done, done in, in the past. So uh, pretty, pretty simple in a way, 
but we all know that these uh, use cases can get pretty complex and that is why why we really think that the machine learning and AI can help here to to a great great extent and I think if if you look at uh, the first two AP automation use cases uh, here that I've I presented they were actually also the two pain points that we got out from uh, from the survey from the organizations that are are using D365 uh, FNO and AS2012 and uh, don't have AP automation implemented because uh, when you implement already these two use cases which are actually available in in the AP automation solutions of of the self you can actually already reap a lot of a uh, lot of benefits and and cut back the the manual work that you would have in in the process otherwise then i think uh, an area uh, of course uh, we want to capture uh, the relevant data uh, from an invoice but what we're investigating at the same time is that what if you captured all the data from an invoice what you can actually do do with that because uh, then really what you can do it's uh, it's kind of limitless because if you have very powerful um, machine learning and ai available in the system and you have access to all all the data that you have on the invoice then uh, kind of uh, the automation capabilities are are limitless I think um, in, in terms of uh, looking at the processing power and, and so forth, uh, uh, you need quite a lot of that, but I think that's also something that now in the cloud era is more easily available. And I think uh, in the end, it's probably not uh, all, all the data we want to capture from an invoice, but it's all the relevant data. And there again, the, the machine learning and AI capabilities can, can help to a great extent. I think uh, again quite a, a simple use case I would say is that okay uh, you have a different approval workflows uh, in your system based on on the delegation of uh, authority and uh, of course uh, when a pattern has happened in the past it's most likely that uh, the pattern is something that we should be following now as well. So um, as, as mentioned, uh, when you're getting a certain type of invoice, uh, the machine learning can easily identify what should be the approval workflow being in the system and if there are any other uh, steps that you, you need to take. So I think this is one of uh, the basic use cases uh, but yet again, uh, something that can help you to automate a, a lot, because uh, if you don't need to manually think about the workflows, uh, rather they are driven by the automation and, and the system based on the, the different uh, levels uh, of uh, approvals that are needed in, in the organization. Obviously, it, it will make everybody's life a, a lot easier. I think this is something that I, I mentioned um, earlier on uh, when, when we were talking about the, the user experience. So where we actually want to get at is that you would only see the things you need to see in, in a system. So uh, if you're approving the invoices, you probably need to just see the relevant data for you. It may be the invoice picture, maybe with a comment saying that you actually approved the same invoice about a month ago. So uh, it looks like that you're okay here and it actually fulfills all, all the criteria for you approving it. So I think uh, what we mean here is that in terms of uh, the user interface and user experience, we want to get very proactive. So uh, uh, basically the relevant uh, data and, and screens and so forth should be there uh, for you, not the things that, that you don't need. Of course, um, again, uh, if you're an AP user, uh, probably the activities that you need to go through, they are more 
more more complex but at the same time we want to make sure that even those uh, those areas are something that are as, as simple as as they can so basically whoever is processing the invoice that the automation couldn't take care of there would be just the, the relevant uh, data and relevant uh, screens available and i think uh, a few more words on, on the fraud detection. Uh, I think uh, this is kind of uh, one of um, the most powerful use cases for AP automation as, as well if, if you kind of think it from the risk perspective. So one, one fraudulent invoice uh, could end up costing a, a lot of money and unfortunately we've seen, seen that happening. So I think uh, with the machine learning uh, embedded into the AP automation solutions, uh, it can really spot the anomalies. So we, if there's a change in account number, uh, if there's a minor change in, in the vendor name, or, or whatever, whatever that hasn't happened in, in the past, uh, it's very easy for the machine learning to actually spot those and then just uh, kind of uh, bring a red flag to the dashboard and, and, and tell the user that this is something that you should be looking into at, at more detail because uh, it doesn't seem to be, be normal. And I think this is um, very, very similar what, what you see from uh, the consumer business. So if, if there are ever suspicious transactions within your own credit card, obviously the bank will, will contact you immediately and ask that, do you, do you think that this is something normal? Were you actually the one responsible for the transaction? And it works pretty much uh, in a similar manner in the AP automation solutions that we just wanna, wanna spot the anomalies and then, then actually flag those uh, before anything, anything can happen. Yeah, then maybe just to conclude here, uh, uh, what we really think is that when we look into the future, and it may not be two years from now, it may not be five years from now, it may be 10 years from now, but um, I think really looking at what's happening uh, with AP automation and embedding all, all the machine learning and AI techniques and kind of in the wider context uh, to your ERP as, as well. Uh, I think when we look at the basic transactions and, and the level level of automation that you can achieve achieve there, it's, it's really 100%. And I think for many subsets of transactions, we're, we're already there. And uh, of course, the, the more complex the transactions are getting, the more complicated it is to automate. But we, we really and truly believe that with the help of uh, machine learning and AI capabilities, this is not just a dream, it's actually gonna be a reality in, in the future. And I, I think uh, this is something that uh, I would like you to take with from this webinar as well, when you think about uh, your current level of automation when it comes to AP automation and that where could we be? It doesn't need to be the 100%, but if you're getting closer, let's say to 70, 80, 90, I'd say that that's already a huge step forward from, from some of uh, the levels of automation we, we're currently seeing on, on the market. But this is uh, really what I had uh, for the machine learning and uh, AI part. And uh, if you have any, any further questions going forward, you can always uh, reach out to me or reach out to us uh, at doappa.com and, and we're, we're there, there to help. So thanks for, for joining the, the webinar today. And um, I hope you actually got some food, food for thought out of this. So thanks for joining. Excellent. Miko, thank you so much for that great information. Um, and yes, if you did ask a question, he and his team will be getting back to you. We did record today's event as well, so you'll be getting a link to the recording of this very informative webcast. So with that, I think we're going to wrap things up. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.